Hello, super friends, James here, and I have something very special for you today. The Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra are bringing a Star Wars show on the road, which will be taking fans um, on a journey throughout Star Wars, um, doing music from each film and celebrating the music of John Williams. Um, I had the absolute pleasure of talking to the conductor, Pete Harrison, um, and we discussed things all Star Wars, orchestras, and the, uh, even the importance of going to concerts and, and how special that experience can be. Um, so check out our full conversation and um, hopefully see you at the show. Hi, James. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to uh, talk to me about the upcoming um, kind of Star Wars definitive concert that is um, doing the rounds. Um, very excited to go, of course. Great. Um, and I was looking at kind of just Star Wars in general, um, and with a show this kind of big, expanding through the entire Star Wars kind of galaxy, I was just wondering how you went about picking those certain themes, songs across all you know, nine films. Um, how did you go about picking your favourites or which ones needed to be showcased? It's, I mean, it's such a tough task because there is, as you say, there's so much music in these films that John's written, uh, so many themes, so many things that become part of our culture. That's one of the things I love about John's music. It becomes part of our culture. Look at the two notes in Jaws, look at the five notes in Close Encounters. And, you know, uh, if anything heroic, da -da -da, da -da 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 -da, it was straight away in there. But um, we are, I suppose, um, I wouldn't say confined by it because there are other ways of doing that but um yeah john is, is wonderful and he publishes a lot of his music through his signature editions um so rather than um maybe someone doing an arrangement which maybe gets published or um just does the rounds should we say um it's nice that um john's actually published his definitive versions of the music in his signature edition. So um, there's a lot of those out there now. He has, I suppose, picked the main themes from the original 1977 film, um, from the, the Skywalker saga, and then so on. Of course, he's catching up now with the latest ones. Um, we, we don't have anything from the latest, latest as yet, but um, no, we certainly do for, for all the other films. Uh, Rise of Skywalker, I think the signature tradition isn't out as yet, but um, that we, we do have plenty from, from the other ones. Uh, and then from there, I mean, it, it's not really a case of choosing what we don't do. We're pretty much doing all of it, I think, because it's, it's, it's so good. Um, we'll, um, our big dilemma, I think, as much anything was, how do we do it? Now, do we do it in all of the films came out? Do we do it in from series, um, episode one? One right the way through um do we do it um to make it more of a musical balance so you know i think you know without giving anything away we we do have to start with the main theme you know i love that um you know that that was that was the first note that um uh, the the trumpet player morris murphy played with the london symphony orchestra his first date with the orchestra as the new principal trumpet there he goes in and john hits him with that great big da, 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 that chord at the beginning and as, as john talked about when he heard that first chord he thought right this is the guy this is the orchestra i want you know <laughs> it's, it's wonderful so um that's uh, it, we're, that's our dilemma at the moment. We're sort of which way around do we go? It'd be nice to make a musical band. So we'll, I think we're going to start with that and finish with something suitably big. But we've just got to control the flow throughout. Um, it could be quite tempting just to get big the whole way through. But um, you know, there is so much beautiful, gentle stuff as well. You know, the uh, Leia's theme, Yoda's theme, um, the Across the Stars, all these um, yeah. sort of more gentle. I mean, how do you get a love theme into Star Wars for God's sakes? But <laughs> John being John manages it because he's so wonderful about what he does. <laughs> so. Brilliant. I mean, like you said, that there's so many different ways you can go about it. Um, and I, I just, I remember I was at the show, I was talking to Heidi, um, I was at the show just before lockdown. And I remember you, um, before the show ended, you announced that you were doing a Star Wars definitive um, collection and you played um, Across the Stars on that show. And that's mm. the first time I've heard it live. Um, I've, I've seen many concerts films in uh, in shows but that's the first time i've ever heard across the stars in concert and mm. it was so so wonderful and when i heard that you were doing um just a show purely dedicated to souls oh, i was made i was so so happy so i'm so excited that it's finally here and you know it kind of draws me back to this question what is it about the music of souls or even john williams in particular that kind of resonates with 
audiences, but has allowed it to maintain popularity for for decades. I think John drew on such a, a vast cultural heritage of um, music, not just classical music, because <clears throat> he's lots of influences in classical music in there. There's more than stood the, the test of time, but um, he harks back to the, um, the the early days when uh, the golden age of cinema, when the likes of Corn Gold, Franz Waxman first came over from Germany, um, avoiding the war. Um, that they first appeared was the adventure of Robin Hood. I think wasn't didn't Corngold describe that as a film that literally saved his life because the Angelus happened shortly afterwards in um, in, in Austria, Germany. So um, he came over. He wasn't intending to, but um, Corngold was described as a genius uh, when he was about fourteen. I think it was by Mahler. Um, so he wrote all this wonderful music. Um, uh, you know. A, a, a genius like him coming into Hollywood and writing this kind of stuff was just phenomenal. So there's Errol Flynn films, um, Captain Blood, Seahawk, all these kind of things. The first time you hear and see those, that music, you go, hang on, where did that come from? That is, it's proper, proper big music. Then it went on an interesting journey after that, um, going through more contemporary scores, which of course, you know, music has to grow and the industry has to grow. But I think it was John that put this back in again, this full symphony orchestra re-established it, but not only re-established it, he, um, he takes these themes uh, against, not stolen, but lifted, used, borrowed um, in great tributes to the, the likes of and Wagner as one of his great heroes. Um, that great ring cycle, there's massive four operas that take about a week to perform. <laughs> That's each one. <laughs> they, they go on forever. But, you know, th there's got such structure through them. And there's a theme for Wotan Spear. There's a theme for the, the, the Rhine, for Brunhilde, for the Valkyrie, all these um, themes that come back and just help us see where we are, what we're doing within a film. And John absolutely took on that. He, he embraced that. There's the different themes. Lay Layers theme is a lovely example. When we finally waited all those years for The Force Awakens to come, how many years that was, we're waiting 20 odd years, wasn't it? Um, and then suddenly out of the shadows of the ship, we see this dark who's this figure coming through and you hear Layers theme playing in the background and there's this old lady. You know, and th th there was Leia all those years later. If we hadn't known that music was there, I think that's for me is what does it, because he writes such beautiful music um, and it ties the film together. Try watching some of the scenes without the music. You watch the end of um, Force Awake, um, the A New Hope, without the, that music playing, the, the throne room in the end title. It's nothing. It really isn't. There's quite a few examples if you hunt around or people say, hmm, I've listened to this without it or watched it. <laughs> but isn't that the same of all films? But uh, I think it's just that um, integrity that John has with his music, harking back to some of the great film composers. Uh, as I mentioned, Eric Korngold, there's the famous thing of um, Korngold and um, his music to King's Row. That was a very famous piece of music that... Um, you know, I wouldn't say John stole from, but it was lightly borrowed uh, for the, <laughs> the main theme. Um, but John does a lot of this borrowing, but he does it with such integrity again. And he always puts his own stamp of authenticity on it, which I, I think is absolutely wonderful. He, he talks about writing with a cloak of different composers on, you know, it might be um, Korngold or Strauss or Wagner, uh, Tchaikovsky, Holst, et cetera, for Star Wars, it might be, um, uh, Aaron Copeland for a film like uh, Lincoln, but whatever he does, it's always got that stamp of John on it. And I think that's what's made the films, you know, it's interesting, they, of course, they re-edited the first three films, didn't they? Um, and, and added all things, Little even E.T. appears at one point on the new ones. I thought that was a, a lovely little touch. But the one thing they didn't change was the music because John does it so well. And there's all the points in the music. John does it old school. He's got the big screen up there and uh, he's actually just watching, listening, listening, he knows at that point that's coming up and bang, that's got to fit with that. And, you know, proper, really, I mean, proper old school, if you see what I mean. So I think that's what makes it work. And that's what made the whole thing work so well. Um, and that's why the music is still so much in our culture and why concerts like this are still so popular. It's it's amazing. It's, um, you know, being able to, there's, there's not an experience like listening to film soundtracks just live with a full orchestra and I think what separates some of the other shows is you bring such a life to them by interacting with the audience providing little stories with them and it, it almost feels like a journey um, whenever I see the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra do it um, because it's not just the music there's also the history behind it there's um, reasoning behind it and I think what's interesting with the kind of like the Star Wars world 
is you're going to be um, dealing with fans from different generations, um, fans that got um, into Star Wars for different reasons. And, and kind of with that in mind, where did your Star Wars journey start for you? 1977. <laughs> I remember that first film and we saw episode four thinking, hmm, what, what, what have I missed? You know, but... You know, when you saw that and you saw that, that, that the scroller disappearing off and then then starts the story, you know, that, that was it for me. I was hooked. I was I playing things in back in the, I, I guess I was. I was, yeah, I was, I, I've had a sort of musical upbringing. My parents were both musical enough and we always had music in the house. So I was playing in instruments at that point, but certainly not in orchestras. But I just remember being struck by that, that, that first chord and, and the... the the, the the main title of it and um, and then how it suddenly changes as we sort of shoot off into space and you know I still get a uh, you know even these days get a sort of shiver whenever time we get to that point in, in the main theme as we disappear off but that that was it for me then of course just waiting for the um, you know the, the other films to come out I mean I love the fact that you know they didn't even know they were going to do the Empire Strikes Back <laughs> and they didn't know the story they, a lot of it was just they just made the film Oh, and then actually we're going to do another one. And yeah. also that relationship now won't give anything away in case anybody's still not quite sure. Um, there's lots of, I'm still not quite sure what's going on, to be honest, but <laughs> it is such a, a big old thing. But I just love the fact that, um, you know, that they grew it from there and, you know, it, it kept me utterly gripped. It really did all the way through. Uh, they lost me a tiny bit, maybe in the, the, the prequel series. Uh, I think some of those bits were, yes, interesting. But, you know, the, 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 especially culminating in, in you know, the, the last film, Rise of Skywalker, it was just, just brilliant. We watched it again the other night here and um, my wife hadn't seen it before. So and she said, oh my God, this is, pro this is like the proper old ones again. This is really, and she was, you know, gripped by it. And again, there's the music and still using the themes just to help who's who, what's what, and adding new themes in, of course, as well, now with Ray and, and all these um, new people coming in. It's, uh, you know, it, and again, it just puts it in place. But then when the themes just change a little bit, the, there was that theme, but then it goes into the major as, um, um, Kylo Ren becomes Ben again and, and suddenly it's oh oh there we are it's uh, you know it's loads of little subtle touches which I think um, make all the difference and you know that it just allows us to go oh there we are with it and it, it carries us through um, the, the whole story I think and yeah that, that was my start with it anyway I loved it. Oh there are so many like um, musical highlights and, and you've mentioned so many of them and you know um, my personal ones would you know Jewel of the Fates um, which just you know it's jewel of the fate um yes, but also yes. looking at the, um kind of sequels and mentioning that subtle change is um i absolutely loved kylo ren's theme um and i always remember from like the force awakens it being really dark and brooding but then as you go through to like the last jedi and and uh, rise of skywalker it almost becomes a lot i don't know sadder i guess in a way softer as you see this evolution of of Kylo Ren becoming gradually Ben Solo again. Yes. And I loved hearing that. It was, yes. it was yeah, loved that one. And yeah. you, again, you've mentioned so many of them before. Do you have any particular favorite tracks from across all of Star Wars that, that you, that really kind of struck a chord with you? I think Leia's theme is one of my absolute favorites. It really is. It's, it's just, to me, it just works. Something about John's music, it, you know, if, if you hear something, and of course everyone's got their own opinions, everyone's got their own tastes about food, about culture, about everything, sport, everything. But for me, that theme just works. And whenever we do that in concert, it always, again, uh, you know, I get the goosebumps all over the place. Uh, doing that it's it, that's for me is one of I think the, the greatest bits in and, and of course used uh, throughout the film anyway I say when when she reappeared in um, in The Force Awakens it was you know it's it, it, there's the music it's her isn't it <laughs> it, was, it was a lovely moment it's it's amazing what composers can do in terms of creating sounds that you immediately identify like characters with it's I, I think <laughs> I love that people are, um, not that they ever did, but I love that people are understanding more how important music is um, mm. in terms of like the big blockbuster. And looking back at like films in concert and, and playing the orchestral um, suites live, um, do you think our relationship with film soundtracks has changed across the years? 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, the, the, there's so many things to say about this. I think um, a neighbour of mine came and saw um, uh, a concert we were doing with Bournemouth a while ago, and um, he was just blown away. He said, there's something, there's nothing false in that room. It's you and a bunch of musicians all plucking, scraping, squeaking, thump, you know, blow, doing something. And you they all come together and they make the sound. And he said, that sound was just electric you know he said i was kind of uh, gripped from the from the outset of it so for me um bringing these uh, film music concerts you know which is incredibly accepted these days there was a time it's really looked down upon classical music oh film stuff ooh, classical music is the thing but i think again thanks to the likes of uh, john williams my gosh we could mention james horner jerry goldsmith etc cetera, etc cetera, with all these as well zimmer as well um you know you could add all these in but i think what they've done is that they've made it I wouldn't say acceptable, but in fact, the Classic FM have programmes now. Radio 3 has a programme. Um, uh, I've just been doing some work in Germany, Classic Radio, this, their equivalent over there. They've, you know, we're just doing a film music concert over there. It's very much part of it. And it, that's what gets bums on seats these days. Um, so that the, the nice thing I always try and say is if you've enjoyed this film music concert tonight, come and see the orchestra again. It's, you know, because you'll hear that, but you'll hear the original sources of inspiration for, for John. You'll hear Tchaikovsky, you'll hear um, Wagner, you'll hear Korngold and so on in slightly different terms. Maybe it's the Korngold Violin Concerto, beautiful piece of music, but you listen to that, you can hear bits of Star Wars in it, you can hear bits of E.T. in it. You know, that, so that for me is um, fantastic. And I love the fact that we can, I can just refer to maybe, I don't know, Bridge of Spies, that very end theme of that, where Tom Hanks comes in, collapses on the bed and there's a thing on the news. And his wife said, were you anything to do with that? And he was sound asleep. You take that music, I can mention that, play the music and everyone goes, wow, yes, I remember that. If you didn't have the music and, you know, two actors came in and just did the scene uh, to no music. <laughs> A little bit dull, I suspect. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's it's made audiences realise that um, the, the power of the orchestra, and I hope you know, just made the orchestra a bit more popular again uh, as a you know as a night out. I still think it's one of the greatest nights out you could ever have. Go and see an orchestra somewhere. We were just recently in America, and you know, I always look up to see uh, what orchestra was playing in Portland, up in Seattle at the time, and go and see them because different orchestra, different world, different country, different everything is going to be a different sound and you know that's one of the highlights of our trip I think for me that was so absolutely it's such a um it's such a wild experience and whenever I see kind of the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra in um you know in my hometown the mm. energy always so it's, it's always so vibrant um you're always getting people involved especially um I think one of my favorites was um anytime it's uh Williams versus Zimmer it's like you're you're trying to start a fight here uh, <laughs> on who you prefer and everyone gets involved and it, it's it's so much fun it's it's mm. about the music but it's also about um the differences between composers and the similarities between composers and mm. i think what's as a conductor you spend a lot of a, a lot of your time with your back um towards us you don't get to see us mm. but the audience reactions, um, the energy in the room, how, how does that make you feel when you're on stage? Uh, you can really feel it. You really can. Um, even though, I'm, as you say, I'm, uh, you know, I'm presenting the wrong end of me, as it were, <laughs> to the audience. But um, you can definitely, definitely feel it. Uh, I remember in early days of doing things like this, uh, I'm coming off at the interval and saying, oh, God, it feels a bit dead out there. But my wife's in the audience. And she said, it's absolutely not. They are gripped. And because they're so gripped by the music, what you're doing, where and the colours you're making and, you know, the picture, then you've taken that into that. And, you know, I, I try and do a few little things I might put, um, um, the uh, you know the Zimmer stuff, Gladiator and Pirates of the Caribbean together because <clears throat> he uses the same music. <laughs> um, I might put uh, some uh, Seahawk next to ET because that was the piece of music Spielberg said to him, have listened to that music from Seahawk by Eric Korngold. And, you know, that's the kind of thing we want for um, the music for ET. So, you know, that's, you know, I love putting little things like that together. So, uh, you know, audiences can be quieter sometimes, but then suddenly at the end, all up on their feet, shouting and screaming. But, you know, it, it does, you can feel it. And I think, oh, have we not nailed this one? What, what we haven't quite got right. But, you know, um, my wife would just say, no, it's okay. They are loving it. It's just because they're loving it. Um, they're just being really quiet and absorbed. And I hate it when I go to concerts and the conductor or the presenter or whatever, 
come on, stand up, get, come on. It's like, well, no, if I don't want to stand up, forgive me. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm really enjoying it, but I'm, or maybe I'm not enjoying it, but I'm, um, don't make me do something I don't want to do. And, you know, the audiences must feel very welcome. And I want them to just um, have their ears open and it just enjoy. And I want to catch them there, right, right in the middle of it, you know, where it's, where it, not where it hurts, but you know, I want them to come away with a little bit of a tear and, you know, being taken places, maybe have a few goosebumps along the way. You know, I, I think that's important. Wagner did a lovely thing. One of the film concerts we did, we did um, the uh, funeral march from Tristan and um, he does a thing there. He said, you know, this, Wagner, my gosh, he made his own theatre because it wasn't big enough. But for that point, all the lights go out and he, he floods the stage with uh, fog from the River Rhine as the funeral procession appears. So he said this music has to be listened to. Don't want anything else going on. You just need to listen to this music. Then as the funeral procession goes, then, you know, it does get into a bit more into the scene. But, you know, it's it's like when you get silence in a film. Silence can be incredibly powerful sometimes, can't it? You know, too much music. And if you haven't got the spotting sessions right, then that, that's that's an awful thing. <laughs> so, you know, but if I can get the audiences to do a bit of that, then, uh, you know, that that's the important thing for me. It's, it's you know, like I said, it's... Um an amazing experience just being able to sit um, and it's so different compared to other trips to the theatre or trips to your local venue because you know if you're watching pantomimes there's that audience participation um, if you're watching a show um, there are moments to laugh at there are um, moments to get involved with but whenever I see you know the Bournemouth Symphony Orchestra or any films um, being done live it's just utter silence you're really kind of getting involved in the scene and where it's like a like a compilation of all the greatest hits it just takes you on a journey like reliving your favorite moments and I think that's what's really special about um you know what you do and and what you bring to fans specifically is it's a journey from you know from your very first moment in Star Wars to to the present day mm. and I don't think that can ever be replaced ever no. like that it just, it's not listening to the music in the film you hear it for the first time it's absolutely mind-blowing but there is something so innocent and pristine about hearing it live just I think I don't think people who haven't experienced a concert don't understand what it's like being able to hear your favorite track being played to you right in front of you Exactly. And with warts and all as well, we will make mistakes. There will be, you know, you might get a funny noise. You might get somebody sneezing or burping loudly in the seat next to you. So all part of the fun of going to a live concert. But that is the whole point of it. You know, we get very listen, used to listen to CDs where, you know, you can spend a whole day doing a, a few tracks on a CD just to get them absolutely right. But no, you're, you're dead right. It's that live performance and that live feeling. Um, and I think the, the beauty about John's music is that you can... Uh, you can feature a whole evening of his music, uh, either just from one series of films. I mean, that's remarkable in itself. But if you try, imagine trying to do that with John Barry. So you could do all of Out of Africa, which is great. Or you could do, uh, you know, uh, best of John uh, Barry, you know, Dances with Wolves and Zulu and so on and so on. Um, but even that would still, after a little bit, might get a little bit samey, I wonder. Same, same with Zimmer. You know, he's got a, a, a slightly broader breadth by the time you go back to... Um, uh, Beautiful Laundra and Miss Daisy and all those kind of things and come right up to date with Interstellar. But, um, you know, I think John has got such a broad brushstroke. If you take all his things from the, um, uh, uh, the, the, the what's the um, memoirs with Geisha, you know, that kind of sound world through to Tintin, through to there's so much. We're not even doing that. We're just doing Star Wars, we're going to say. So, you know, but there's, there's enough in there. And as you say, hearing it live is nothing like it. There really isn't. I still get goosebumps, as I say, now. And I've got the best scene in the house, pretty much. <laughs> so, <laughs> Brilliant. And one last question, Edward. I feel like it, it might be a bit of a tricky one for you. Do you have I'm a ready. favorite film soundtrack, like in general, just one that um, maybe a, a specific track or just a film that you think has a very memorable soundtrack that just stays with you? Mm, good question. Can I, can I do two or not? Yes. No, no. I, I, there are no rules. You can. Have <laughs> yeah. um, um, they, they are both John. Um, um, Jaws, first one for me. Um, I think that was the first one where he tied all his, you know, thoughts and ideas from his early days 
um, working. He worked with some of the great Hollywood greats. You know, Herman, he worked with a lot. And of course, Herman worked with Hitchcock and that Hitchcock relationship with those two and him and Spielberg. I, I draw lots of parallels there. But um, I think that that theme um, in, in Jaws, just the two notes. And Spielberg thought he was joking when he first played it to him, but then realised he wasn't. But also, just as well, because that flipping shark didn't work, did it? That mechanical one. <laughs> Called Bruce after Spielberg's lawyer, but you know, for the reality, they filmed it all out at sea, took it out, turned it on, and it sunk. So you know that <laughs> I love that 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 story. Um, but that's when the music became into it because it's isn't it a better film when you see the camera going through the water and you see people splashing away in the distance, and then you suddenly hear, um, Oh my God, goosebumps already. You think oh, that became scarier than any slightly rubbish plastic shark or mechanical yeah. shark, you know? So, but it's just the way he builds all that and the way he uses the music to uh, complement all the scenes. And it's his first, um, so I suppose, using these themes, these light motifs, and first time properly tied it all together. And the film and the music, absolutely like this. There's that for me, um, just because of that, as much as anything else, such a groundbreaking film. But the other one for me is E.T. I just love the film E.T. It's uh, the music is stunning. Again, very corn gold based. Um, it was a nice little tribute to, was it, I think, to Tex Avery, wasn't it, the cartoonist? And you don't see any adults apart from Elliot's mum um, uh, above the waist for the first half of the film. Is all wow. below the waist for any adults. So the, the guy in the forest on the wood you see is legs downwards, like like in all the Tom and Jerry films, uh, cartoons. You know, it's a little tribute because it focuses more on the kids. Um, yeah. They filmed it all in absolute order as well uh, as it came. They didn't do a bit of this, bit of that, bit of that, just because of all the you know the young actors involved, just to help it make make it a bit easier for them. So yeah, yeah. so. Not just all those things. I mean, those are just lovely little touches between Williams and Spielberg and, and a trust between those two. Uh, the, the music at the end, Adventures on Earth, which we, we've done with Bournemouth a few times, but it's a great piece of music. You've got the chase scene as E.T., Elliot and all his chums are escaping from the police. Then the, the wonderful flying theme as E.T. does his magic. Then they land a very sad farewell before E.T. reunites and blasts off back out in space again. But it's a huge piece of music. It's about 12, 15 minutes long. And John being old school, as they had the big screen up there, he'd be conducting where you've got to get a few hit points where this happens, that happens. He manages the first one. The next bit, somebody splits a note. Right, so we've got to start again and, and so on. So on. And eventually Spielberg just said to him, tell you what, John, forget that. Turn the screen off and just play it. Just play it as you feel it, as you want it to happen. And we'll re-edit the film around the music. <laughs> you just don't ever see that. <laughs> but what a lovely trust between those two and their understanding from the moment they first met. I think they both went, wow. I think John said about Spielberg, he said he's he he knows more than I've, or he's forgotten more than I know about film music and about films which I love that idea. You know, he's had the knowledge and it's, you know, it's forgotten more than John Williams ever knows. So, you know, John famously doesn't ever go to the cinema. He never really listens to music. You know, he's often said this because his, his head is so full of it. And, you know, when you've worked on a film and you sat in the editing suite and the dubbing suite for, you know, seeing a film 50 times, I thought of going and seeing it again. <laughs> and he's such a perfectionist. He's always listening to things and going, oh no, the bass is too heavy in this theatre. What's going on? So, you know, it's almost a curse I'd have thought for him, don't you reckon? <laughs> I think so, yeah. It's yeah. two wonderful choices though. And, and yeah, it, that's definitely brought back memory seeing Jaws for the first time, but also, watching et recently and i want to go back and rewatch it for um that little bit of trivia that you you mentioned um yes yeah, yeah. Some, some fantastic choices and um, th that was all my questions up, and it, it's been such a pleasure talking to you about um music and i cannot wait to experience the star wars definitive concert and it yeah i i don't think people are quite prepared for what you, the show that you're going to um, put on for them and yeah it's been so interesting uh, being able to talk to someone who likes film soundtrack and who actually is heavily involved in it and it's a personal you know passion of mine and just being able to kind of learn from the other end of it has been really really illuminating so thank you thank you for taking the time to talk to me about all this as well no my pleasure james well thank you for bringing it to you know to the attention of all, all your uh, listeners and viewers here because you know i think the more people we can get to come to these things um as video games get closer to cinema they'll become one they really will and the composers these days are writing um for video game music as they are for film it's you know giacchino's done both famously from his early um film stuff and his early um 
uh, video game music, they're, they're getting closer and closer together and they will just become one. And, you know, the more that people can realise, OK, great, listen to those tracks, but go and see them live. They are amazing. You know, bring your tissues, bring your, you know, bring a big smiley face and all the rest of it. You're going to get the lot. You really are. So it's a whole gamut of emotions. <laughs> so, yes. Can't wait. Fantastic. Perfect. Thanks. Cheers. Thanks for watching super friends if you enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button just down below and hit the bell so that you can get notified whenever we release brand new videos in fact there's two more waiting for you to watch right here below so what are you waiting for why not click play